Hey everyone, I'm back for another quick gameplay. I know it's been a couple days, been pretty busy with work. Uh, so I'm playing against Yidris Maelstrom Wielder, and I'm using my Sadisi Brood Tyrant deck. Against uh, Killjoy7, I think I have a couple of videos uh, against Killjoy on my channel already. Uh, pretty excellent player, and definitely a good sport about everything as well. Uh, sometimes you don't run into that with the Yidris player, uh, because typically Yidris storms out in one turn, and uh, sometimes those same players that want to be the ones allowed to storm out don't want anyone else to do their things. But uh, I had a great match against uh, Killjoy. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get the other two videos up also. Uh, or other video, I don't remember. Uh, this was about six days ago that I had this match. So uh, this is the first chance that I've gotten to record it. I have a very capable hand. I have turn one death rate shaman. Uh, Killjoy is on the play, so if play goes with a fetch land, I'll, I can play death rate shaman and it'll be online the following turn. Otherwise, I'll play elvish mystic, just to guarantee that I have that turn to Nissa. So, let's see. Killjoy keeps their seven as well. Windswept teeth. That's fantastic. So, I'm gonna get. Uh, all right, brainstorm turn one main step. Fine by me. Death threat shaman online. Taiga into not, uh into suspended wheel of fate. So I gotta keep that in mind. I'm gonna pop that out so we can uh, remember that's coming up soon. And I'm actively aware of this wheel of fate existing. So I'm gonna eat there thing, play Elvish Mystic, and go for Baleful Strix here. And I do this because I, I drew the land, so I'm not worried about uh, making sure I hit my land drops the following turns quite yet. Wheel of Fate, uh, so is at three. Yeah, frantic Search, well that's fine, alright. Pitches a Wheel of Fortune, makes sense, already got Wheel of Fate suspended, why use Wheel of Fortune? And Bring to Light, I've Imagine this was pitched because Killjoy doesn't see an opportunity to resolve that prior to Wheel of Fate. So, it makes sense. Untap some lands. Uh, thanks for a sec. Doesn't cast whatever spell they were thinking about. So I'm going to go to Nissa, pick up a forest, play uh, Temple, see Bloom Tender. And now, I think I left Bloom Tender on top here. Uh, I don't want to pop out the chat. I know you've seen it pop up a couple times now. I don't want to pop it out because we were talking about another player that I had just played uh, some games with who uh, the second and third game that I tried to play with them, uh, they concede a seven card hand. They uh, they were playing Leervold, and with, as soon as they saw I was playing Yisun in those matches. So uh, they concede because th they saw I was playing a real, real competitive deck and I think they were playing two specifically curb stomp casuals. And uh, that's not the type of player that I want to play against. So I'm not going to call him out, but if you're the, that type of person who does that and brings a competitive deck to a table specifically to play against casual people, uh, you shouldn't be playing Magic. I can understand there's a disparity in the levels of some decks, but when you're playing a competitive deck, don't get mad that other people are going to as well. All right, so you're just on four. I have Jace to counter Yidris. I'm going to just bounce Yidris to the hand, get that tempo play, crash in, and I unfortunately don't have enough to deploy Bloom Tender this turn. Would have loved to be able to put Bloom Tender down. Tap for three next turn. So Yidris comes back down for four, no land drop. Alright, so I'm going to exile this Wheel of Fortune, just to make sure that it doesn't ever get flashback off a Passing Flames or something. Bounce Yidris again, so I'm just trading this Jace minus ones for uh, some tempo against the Yidris deck. And right now, Jace minus one, bouncing Yidris back, Wheel of Fate's about to resolve. So this was better than a kill spell because uh, it, Jace is still around. And what Jace has done for me is now that I've bounced Yidris to their hand, Wheel of Fate's going to resolve in upkeep, Yidris is going to go back to the command zone and then cost six. So that gives me a chance to use Jace's plus two and reset him for Yidris coming back down short of uh, mana Crypt or Land Sol Ring uh, being able to redeploy Yidris this coming turn. So I'm in great shape now that I've been uh, I know that this wheel's coming down 
I kept Bloom Tender because I wanted to set myself up for mana after a huge draw, and this is definitely not the position my opponent wanted to be having Wheel of Fate resolve in. Tap some mana, cast Sidisi. And I decide for Sidisi here, rather than leaving up mana to use Deathrite Shaman, I want to get some value going. And I hit a Drainage Tournament, lose the Vampiric Tutor, which hurts, but uh, I do feed Hinterland Harbor into my graveyard, so that means Deathrite Shaman is back online for mana production. It's the real reason Deathrite Shaman is included in the deck, even though I don't own Fetchlands on Moto yet, is because uh, Sidisi feeds the graveyard for Deathrite Shaman to continue to work. And with my hand being about to be wheeled away, uh, pitching these lands doesn't matter. Pick up Standstill, Phantasmal Image, and a bunch of land. Kinda hurts, but I do have this Skull Clamp, and that might be useful. My opponent, 3, 4, 3, Toxic Deluge for 3. Alright, well there goes my board. And I mean, I was overextending into it, into a Wrath, it's okay. Uh, but my hand was going to be pitched anyway, so I might as well overextend and make them spend the Wrath. I do still have a Jace going, which does matter. Pick up a Mystic Remora. So I'm going to Jace Storm this turn, because I really want to get some cards out of my hand. And I miscount my mana. I think I... For some reason I was thinking Sidisi costs 3 normally, so it would only cost 5 to replay her. Uh, I don't know what I was on. Uh, but So I think I have enough to deploy Remora, and then cast Sidisi, and mill away those cards that I put back with Jace, which is why I used Brainstorm instead of Fate Seal. And it was just a, a wild mistake. I play Remora, realize I don't have enough for Sidisi, so I'm going to deploy the pod instead, and the Skull Clamp. So I'm just make it look like that was intentional, that I didn't misplay at all. My opponent redeploys Yidris, and says go. So I'm going to let Remora go. I, it, it, I realized I needed the mana more than anything else. Uh, so, definitely a misplay. I could, should have just played Sidisi last turn. So, I'm going to Jace. Uh, I think I Jaced myself. Um, I jumped through it. Phantasmal Image, copy Yidris. Pod Yidris away into Sadistic Hypnotist. And this is when I realized that I had pitched the Sidisi earlier. But uh, Hypnotist turns out to be a, a pretty decent play here. Uh, so I then I play the standstill and equip hypnotist. Now, this is uh, sort of the spot where my opponent uh, I think makes their first big misplay. They use Yidris and attack Jace instead of attacking me. Uh, I'm letting them get a Yidris pot potentially a Yidris trigger in, and they decide to kill the planeswalker that has been harassing their commander the entire game. And I think their thought here is, oh, I'll just kill Jace, that way I, Yidris will stay on field longer, and I don't have to worry about it. They should have just gone for it here. I have the standstill, they're most likely going to break the standstill anyway. Because if they don't, I'm going to Jace, bounce Yidris, and then they have to break it, because I have a 3 power creature in play, and they have no creatures. So, it makes sense for them to attack me over Jace here, if they're going to be breaking the standstill. So that way they can... Uh, recoup some of the lost advantage that I get off this standstill by getting free spells from Yidris. I'm of course not going to block. Jace down. An Aether Flux Reservoir. I check their life total real quick, realize it's not relevant. And a Rakdos Signet. Alright. So I pick up Necrologia. Not gonna matter this game. I think for Zek I realize I have enough to Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness get back Jace. Birthing Pot, Eternal Witness, into Sower of Temptation. Sower Yidris, use Sadistic Hypnotist to pitch Yidris at my opponent's hand, make them throw away Gush and Scalding Tarn. And uh, I think the reason they don't Gush there is because if they do, they will never resolve Yidris the rest of the game. And I'm making sh going to do my best to make sure of that. Get in with Hypnotist, pitch the Sower at my opponent's face just to deal with the rest of their hand. They're going to Vampiric Tutor in response, forgetting that I have Jace the Mind Sculptor in my hand now. A lot's happened this turn. Pitch Yawgmoth's Will. Wow. What a hand they had. Gush, Vamp, Yog Will. Like, uh, so their hand was uh, Gush, Scalding Turn, Vamp, Yog Will, Reservoir, Signet, 
uh, and they had Yidris uh, that could have hit me, they sh they probably should have just gone for it. Because you have Vampiric Tutor into whatever. Uh, potentially Time Twister. I could see Time Twister. Or uh, some big mana effect. Vamp, vamp into so something that's mana. Gush, Cascade into whatever you vamped for. Then Yogg will off... Maybe you vamp Dark Ritual there. Yeah, you probably vamp Dark Ritual because you have a Windfall in the yard. So that you vamp Dark Ritual. Uh, Gush, draw the Dark uh Cast the Dark Ritual. Use Dark Ritual to play Will. Replay Ritual. Re replay Gush. Play Metamorphose. Play Windfall. Or... I'm sure you could get Reservoir in there prior also. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you have Vamp and then Reservoir. That's it. Uh, so you don't get any life off either of them. But then you're getting three, four, five, yeah. They probably would have been able to win off of that insane hand. So I'm going to Jace and Fate Seal away whatever they looked at. Let's see what it was. Past in Flames. Well, that's definitely going to get to the bottom of their decks. Alright. My opponent goes for you just again, picks up the life. Not that it's going to matter to me. Uh, I'm going to just Jace Bounce for the tempo. Play the Soul Ring. Ship him with Hypnotist. And here's the real kicker. Play Acidic Slime. Kill the Reservoir. Clamp the Slime. Strip their land. Throw the Slime at their hand. Pitching the Yidris that I just bounced, making it cost even more mana. Draw two cards off the clamp, and this is what an opponent says. Yeah, this is probably the game. I said, yep, Hypnotist tends to be pretty good. What's your just cost now? Ten. Uh, reclamp the Hypnotist. They go with an Arid Mesa. I could pick up a Rex Sage, kill even more of their mana. B pod the Sage away. Get it. Glenelandra just to protect from random top deck time twisters. And with Glenelandra resolving they concede the game, because now I can just Jace leave any non-creature spell on top of their deck, because I have Glenn to protect myself from it, and uh, Jace is going to end the game rather quickly if it's not combat damage by itself, because they are on a five-turn clock at this point. hope you guys enjoy the gameplay. Uh, I certainly enjoyed playing it, and Killjoy7 is an excellent opponent if you ever see him online. Don't, don't forget to say hey, and asked to play against his Yudris deck. I think he's an excellent pilot for it. It's just uh, uh, one little misplay on the Jace was what did it, and Killjoy realized it as soon as um, uh, they did, knowing that Jace wasn't the threat. They should have just tried to kill me that turn. Uh, they probably thought I was on a more controlling build of Sidisi when, in fact, my build's a lot more proactive than reactive. Alright, so that's the entire game plan. I hope you all enjoy it. Don't forget to like, like, subscribe, and share the video to anyone you think might enjoy this type of gameplay, competitive. And I love engaging with all you guys in the comments. Keep your comments coming. Let me know what misplays I made. I'm sure I, th I'm sure I made a couple besides uh, forgetting that I couldn't pod into CDC here just to block the Yidris, but Hypnotist actually worked out really well in this, and I was pleasantly surprised. And this is definitely one of the rarer gameplays where I only played to DC once, and uh, she did a vir virtual nothing other than getting my best tutor in the deck off the top of my deck for some reason. So, overall, I think it was a fantastic game plan. I played it pretty tight. Uh, the game was going to be over, because I can uh, play Sakura Tribelder, pod Sakura Tribelder into... Uh, anything else, and I was going to start attacking their lands. I was going to start trying to do everything I can to regrow the Acidic Slime, and uh, my plan was probably to Necrologia on end step, leave up blue for Glenelandra because it doesn't matter what I see off Jace. Necrologia pay 15 life probably, pick up 15 cards, pitch anything I don't need, and that would have been the game with this resolving. Alright, see you all in the next one. And uh, give me some suggestions for uh, if you like the CDC videos, if you want to see more of the Widwin. I know I just started recording some of that. The list has been uh, f uh, faring pretty well for me. I have a deck tech incoming for that as well. All right, bye.